By the way, this will be the last time I will be coming down uh, before the liturgy and uh, speaking uh, something of the church uh, since uh, we're beginning uh, Sunday school and, uh, and I will be talking with the children. That, this would be before communion and uh, the things that I've said to you, uh, I will probably re repeat to the children. And uh, anyway, so, uh, so things are changing since we're getting back, you know, the children are coming back. And again, I encourage you to come back as well. Uh, even now, the question is, uh, shall we con continue to, uh, to uh, stream this, uh, the liturgy, or shall we discontinue it and, uh, and, uh, and hopefully that you won't come back uh, to church physically as, uh, as actually uh, you watch it. So anyway, that's where we are uh, at this point. Anyway, let me just uh, mention one more thing because uh, of the church. Uh, since uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about the, uh, when, the, when the priest uh, prepares the, the, the uh, body of Christ. Uh, it's called the proscomedi, uh, the preparation. And, uh, and I, 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 I explained the, the sword, the spear, as we call it, the spear. And last week, I explained something of the spoon, the common spoon of how we receive the Holy Communion. Uh, so when, that's, when that is complete, the priest is complete, during the liturgy, uh, he comes out uh, with, the, uh, with that, what the preparation is. It's in a place now uh, where it's called the proscomedi, where, where it's prepared, but it has to be transferred to the, uh, to the altar table. And uh, the priest comes out with the paten and with the, uh, uh, the, the cup and, uh, and, and brings it out. And that's called the great entrance. The great entrance, uh, where again uh, the sacrifice of God. God came into the world, uh, gave Himself up, and this is the uh, the bread and the wine that's being transferred from the place of preparation. We come down the center aisle and go back into the altar and put the paten and the cup uh, on the altar of where uh, it will soon be consecrated uh, to and transformed into the the body and blood of Christ. So uh, many people, again, believe that when we walk around uh, that it is the body and blood. It's not. It's the bread and the wine. And then once it's on the altar table, it's consecrated, and then it becomes uh, the uh, body and blood of Christ. And uh, that's uh, how we receive Holy Communion uh, when, uh, when, that, uh, when, that, uh, when that happens. So again, I encourage you to start coming back to church. Uh, um, We'll see how long it takes, you know, for uh, for us to decide, you know, what what we're going to do in the future, uh, whether to stream or to continue. But anyway, uh, hopefully we see you uh, mostly in church, and perhaps we can continue this as long as we have people that would uh, are willing to do it, and they are willing to do it. So anyway, so we'll take it from there. Thank you. 
Let us be attentive. Titus, my son, the saying is sure. I desire you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to apply themselves to good deeds. These are excellent and profitable men, but avoid stupid controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels over the law, for they are unprofitable and futile. As for a man who is factious, after admonishing him once or twice, knowing that such a man is perverted and sinful, he is self-condemned. When I send Artemis or Tychicos to you, fear best to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Dear best to see Dennis the lawyer and and Apollos on their way. See that they lack nothing and let our people learn to apply themselves to good deeds. So as to help cases of urgent need and not to be unfruitful. All who are with me and greetings to you, greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all on that. Peace be unto you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So be our sea, a pusmet way of a
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. The Lord said this parable, the Lord went out to sow his seeds and he saw some were among the bad and was fattened underfoot and the birds of the air devoured it and some fell on the rock and had stored up which cleaned away before the had on the foot and some fell among the throne and the throne grew with it and choked it and some fell into the throne and grew on me a hundredfold and when his disciples asked him what this parable meant he said to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God but for those for others they are in trouble so that seeing they may not see and hearing they might not understand now the parable is this the seeds of the word of God and the ones along the back of those who have here them then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts and that they may not believe and be saved and the ones of the rock are those who when they hear the word receive it with joy but these have no roots they believe for a while and in time of temptation fall, fall away and as for what fell among the throne they are those who hear but as they go their way they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life and their food does not mature and as for those for that in the good soil they are those who hear in the word for the fast and honest and good heart and bring forth fruit with patience and he said these things he cried out he who has ears to hear let them
agree to be a bonus of trespass against us, and we are silent to the tradition of the Lord of the Lord. The Lord of 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 the Lord Now and ever and to ages of ages. O Lord, be unto you all. And with your spirit and power and salvation to all. O Lord, O Lord. We give thanks to your good and holy life and your power. We pray now to you by great mercy for us to do nothing to gain. Not to look down from heaven upon those who are not ahead of you. And God, not before flesh and blood, but before you, we also God. Therefore, God said, I have to go for our life, God, and I have to go for you to reach us. Say, I will go to the sale, I will go to the sale, and I will heal the sick. Position of our soul. God, you can take the risk of your soul, and yet you only know you might try to find your thoughts. Seems to apply to you, and there are some things of us, and I am not going to say, I am here.
was the last time you heard that? Two years ago. Two years ago. We have not had federal school for two years. That's amazing. Anyway, we're back again, and, um, and God is good. So we've been, uh, we've been all relatively safe, and uh, thank God for that. So anyway, uh, good to be back. Uh, we're going to do what we've always done while we have classes. Uh, I'll come out and I'll speak with you. Uh, what I've been doing is, uh, because we have this on TV, uh, that uh, I've been speaking, uh, I've been speaking before the liturgy of which way I would have spoken to you about the things of the church. So that's what we're going to do again. We're going to speak about things that we do and see in the church. Uh, some things that uh, will be repeated. We'll repeat some things because, uh, again, uh, some, some of you, the younger ones, have not heard it. And if we hear it again, that's fine. The more we hear things, you know, the repetition, by the way, is the best way. Or to say things over and over again is the best way to learn. Uh, that when we say things, so if we say it uh, yeah, at different times, uh, that'll be fine too. So that's what we want. And one thing I, I do want, if, if you have any questions, you know, what, why do we like candles? Or what, uh, you know, what is Holy Communion? and how we do all that? And which we're going to speak of anyway. But if you have any questions, uh, you can write on a piece of paper and give it to your teacher or give it to me either way. And, uh, you know, uh, and I will answer that question uh, 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 to all of us, and, uh, and we, can, uh, we can do that. So, again, if you have any, and not only, not only uh, children, but uh, adults as well, if you have any questions. I see some children over there. It would be nice if they were here with the, with the kids uh, and to go to Sunday school, but we're not now. But uh, anyway, when you come in on Sundays, please do that. Our children to, again, come here to see them if they have a little special reasons for being there, and again, we will, uh, again, uh, do the things that we know to do. Now, one of the very simple things, and I've said it so many often, so, so many times, but I'll say it again for those who, who are not sure uh, about how we do the cross. First of all, let me just say uh, briefly that uh, there are two things that we must know to be called Christians. If we don't know it or believe it, we are not Christians. Now, what are those two things? One is to believe in the Trinity, that there are three persons, one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God. However that way is, it's God's mystery to us. But Christ came down, and that's what he told us. He said that there are, there are three persons, and he is the second person of the Trinity. We call that the Holy Trinity. You must believe in the Holy Trinity to be a Christian. And the other thing that you must be to be a Christian uh, is that Jesus came into the world and that he is fully divine, he is God from all time, before all time, and that he is a, a human being also. He, he, he became a human being, uh, born of Mary, uh, his mother, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, she was a virgin and he, she, he, he gave birth, uh, she gave birth to him. So we have... Uh, those two things. Other Christians, they're not Christians, you know, we're tempted, they call themselves Christians, but other uh, uh, beliefs and call themselves Christians, some of them don't believe in the Trinity, some of them don't believe in the divinity of Jesus, and that's, that's a, what we call a heresy. A heresy means uh, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's not the truth. In other words, it's not the truth. So we must believe in the truth in Christ. Here we are, Orthodox Christians, and other Christian faiths also believe that, but we, especially as Orthodox Christians, believe it. So, uh, so we witness that all the time. How do we do that? And I, and I showed you this before too. We do our cross. How we do our cross? We put three fingers front and two fingers tucked into the palm, and that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is the, the divinity and, and humanity of Jesus. So we as Christians believe that and do it and witness it all the time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. So I want you to remember that every time we do the cross, the Trinity and the divinity and humanity of our Lord and our Lord. So anyway, it's a, a delight to see you all back. Uh, we, uh, we hope most people, most people are, not most people, many people are still away. 
because of the COVID and for whatever reasons, that's okay. It's up to them. And uh, hopefully we'll all come back and we'll all have our classes and uh, meet our teachers, which we're going to do today. You can meet your teachers and you'll have your first class. So may God bless you in your season uh, in schooling and uh, your teachers and your parents and all who are here.
पानी में ये सारी पूर्वा फिसो इसके सीख माता पैर उत्तर महात्मा इनके सोतो सोमलाजमा है सोता एक बार इसको अंशी अस्तक मिया किसी पौधी में पत्री का पासुमी पारागी सुपारी पियों बोली की है बोली तो सिखी है निकट सोमता दिव्यों
As a good and loving God who can never sin, they have committed this all of our deeds. For there is for there for there is no one who lives in the sinners. You alone will not sin in your righteousness and everlasting righteousness, and your word is true. Children, you know, to be on a horse and, 
and to experience that. Not everybody uh, uh, has uh, have experienced that since we're most of the city. Uh, so anyway, it, it should be a good trip, and that's going to be on the uh, Saturday of the 30th, uh, and, uh, and, uh, that, and at 1.15. Uh, we have to, we can be here uh, at a given time, we have to work that out. We'll just take our own project and go there. And, and uh, the next, I'll just remind you that next month is uh, Stewardship Month, of where uh, we offer uh, to the Lord, uh, you know, for this uh, building uh, and this church that uh, we, uh, you know, we contribute to the best that we can. Remember, stewardship. What is stewardship? You give for, for your, out of your own heart. You get out of your own heart. And if your heart says, if I, if I can afford uh, to give to the church as much as I can, I'm going to do that. If you feel that, uh, well, I'll pay minimal, or I'll pay up to where the taxes are okay, you know, and it won't hurt me, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Do it your own way. That's between you and God. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Between you and the Lord, whatever you're doing, solution is between you and the Lord. And that's the way it should be. And again, you should not tax or, or you pay a fee to be to the church. It, it's a system that uh, uh, just doesn't seem to fit correctly. It's a church, you come here willingly, you give willingly, uh, you, you give yourself to the Lord willingly, not by anybody else's. Again, the Icon store, and that's open. You can go anytime. Uh, the, the food store is, is very short, but there may be some uh, items in there that you might like. You can shop. Just take it. Uh, there's a couple of bad, uh, envelopes in there. If you want to put money in the envelope, if you don't have money, you'll have to pay later. You, know, you can do whatever you want. If you go to the stores, take what you like, and, uh, and pay later, and that would be fine. Anyway, today's gospel again is a, a very, um, uh, a very learning gospel for us. And uh, Jesus uh, tells a story, uh, which is uh, uh, called a parable. Uh, what's a parable? A parable is a, is a story uh, that uh, relates or is analogous to another story, uh, and that's the way Jesus spoke in many, many ways. And, uh, and, uh, and he spoke uh, many parables. As a matter of fact, I, I read he had 55 parables in, in the Gospels, of which there were stories uh, of uh, not, direct, not telling directly of what it was, but, but going around it. And, uh, and, uh, and then the, uh, even the apostles asked him, why, why do you speak in parables? Why don't you just tell us outright? He said, uh, he said a very curious thing. He said, because uh, for those who, uh, it's not meant for everybody to understand. Only for the believers. If you can believe, that's why, even in the gospel today, it says, if you have ears to hear, then hear. It's for the believers. If you don't want to hear, if you don't want to understand it, you don't have to. God does not force us. He doesn't twist our arms. He doesn't do anything uh, for us to force us. That's the believers. So he says, I, I speak in parables uh, so you, the believers, may believe. But the parable has to be interpreted too. It has to be uh, brought out to say, well, what does it really mean? And today's parable happens to be of the sower. A sower is a farmer, and he sows his seed. Uh, and, uh, and in those days, they, they didn't have plows, and they had plows, but not you know, you know, the machines and things like that. And cedars and all that. They didn't have cedars. What they do is they, they, uh, they bore, plow a rut, a few ruts as they went, and they, and they throw the seeds. They throw the seeds uh, into the ruts, and that's the way they would do it. So Jesus gives the story. He says, you know what? The, 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 the farmer, the sower, uh, goes out and, and, he, and he sows his uh, seeds. And, uh, and he says, and some of them uh, fell on the rocky ground, you know, they did fall into the rut where the earth was, they fell out the rocky ground and, they, and the, on the rock, on the rock, on the rocky ground, they just burned up, they just burned up and they withered. Uh, then he says, and uh, some of them, as they saw it, they fell among weeds, and uh, then they grew, except when the weeds came in, uh, they, they choked the, 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 what you remember, the wheat or whatever they had. So the weeds would uh, choke the wheat, 
and it's like children fell uh, on good soil, and they grew, and some of them grew to, uh, you know, bear fruit, uh, you know, uh, some uh, tenfold, some hundredfold, some thousandfold, whatever it might have been, and so that was it. And, 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 the, and the apostles brought them know what that meant. And he, and, he, and he told the story. He said, you know what, what that means? He said that uh, who is uh, who is the farmer? God is the farmer. God is the sower. And we are the seeds. We, the people. And, and we throw the seeds, and some of us, uh, about, and he's talking about faith. Where is your faith? If it falls on the ground, if it falls on the ground, uh, it's, it's not going to grow. And we have many, many people, millions of people in the world that just don't believe. They simply don't believe. Some of them fell amongst the weeds, and they grew up a little bit, and uh, and uh, they uh, and they uh, and what happens? Yeah, I love the church and all that, but the world came in around us, and we began to look at the world. Forget the church, the world. Everything else was more important. The church was maybe not even secondary. It was lost. It was lost. So the weeds came in and, and, uh, and uh, choked us, uh, choked men uh, because of uh, so many other concerns and not to the fullness of faith uh, in the church. By the way, there was a, there was a fourth one, one that fell uh, 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 in the rock and in some soil, and it came in and it, and the, the seed, because the rock was hot and the sun came in, and there was some soil that it sprung up right away. And then as, as soon as the, the sun hit high, it, it, it withered right away as well. And those are the ones uh, who, again, who I, I heard about the faith. I know about the faith. I know about, and as a matter of fact, I had, I had a couple just within the month. Two of them saying, I, I really heard about orthodoxy. I really want to learn more. I, Tell me, I made two appointments. These are two people who didn't know each other, and none of them showed up. They just didn't show up. I got excited. I probably saw it on the, on the uh, internet. I read it. Maybe I saw the archdiocese, uh, and, I, and I saw it, and I, and I said, "Wow, this is really something." Of which many of you, by the way, have already done that, and you're here, and you're here. But not everybody. Not everybody nourishes the faith. I talked and talked for an hour, maybe two hours. We talked, and I said, come to church. Well, let's make an appointment next week, which I did both, and they didn't show up. So they got excited, and as quickly as they got excited, they fell and knew, and that's the way. So God says that. Now, you know what? I was wondering about, you know, we're reading this, and, uh, and, and uh, we want to uh, talk about it. And I was thinking about it, and this is my, my, my own thing, and I, I, I think that, you know, you just uh, think it out. And I said, you know what? God is the soul. And it says that some of the seeds fell on wherever that quite growing was. So we are the seed, and how, how did we fall? How did we, how did we fall, and where did we fall? And it occurred to me. What about a child that's born into uh, wicked parents? You know, the father's abusive, does horrible things with the children. Uh, or a born in some place where uh, never heard of the Lord, never heard of the Lord. Born poor, as a matter of fact, have a better chance to find God if you're born Or born rich, let's put it that way. What about those who are born rich? They have a harder time finding God. God warns us about our wealth. In the Bible it says, the, it's the rich that are in more trouble than those who are, who are, you know, struggling in life. If you have a lot of money, you have a big problem. We spoke about that. Now. And God talks a lot about money. It's not me, it's not coming from me. It's not coming from me, it's coming from the, from the gospel. But that person that was abused in his whole life, in his whole life, and finds that can never come to the Lord, maybe because of the abuse, maybe whatever it might be, how does God judge that? And why? Yeah, we're born, 
we have the best of all, of all things. Born here in America, or born in Greece, or born wherever we are, but born or come into orthodoxy. You cannot get better than that in the world. We're giving the most. We are born into it. And if we take it for granted, uh, a loss to us. A loss to us. So my question again is, why and how are we born? And how do we find ourselves in Christ? Or is it that we have our souls need to be pure in the sense that we are just good people, good hearts, and we love our neighbor, and we love, even if we never heard of God, we love our neighbor. How does that fall in? What what seed is that 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 uh, that He sowed into the world? Who are we? Who are we uh, in relationship to our Lord? So there are many again, many that say, you know what, that person was abused, grew up, became wicked, became a murderer, became an abusive person himself, and that person uh, is most likely going to go to hell. Most likely going to go to hell. So it's a mystery to me. God says he threw the seed, and wherever it fell, it fell. That doesn't mean predestination. It doesn't mean that he predained, pre, pre, pre ordained us to be uh, lost or saved. What does it come down to? It comes down to our own free will. I have a will to believe what I can have. How I was born, rich or poor. If I was a, uh, if I became uh, whatever work I did in the world, I had a choice. And we still have choices. And a choice is ours. That's what God gave us. And He is the one, He is the one who judges. We don't judge. We do not judge. Although we do uh, have a certain amount of, uh, of, uh, of understanding of, uh, of what is right and wrong. Of course we do. We have a, a sense of what's right and wrong. And in that way we can judge whether we how we behave to the other person or how we behave to others and things like that. But we're not judges. Only God can judge uh, uh, the world and, and, and whoever it is in it. Take of the, the great massive uh, 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 abuses of the world, Hitler and Stalin and all those. Did they go to heaven or did they go to hell? We would all say, discerning it, they probably went to hell. However, we're now less present if we, if we go to hell and we see one of them, we win one of them. Only God is the judge. So it's a good lesson to us that we are born, wherever we're born, wherever that we are thrown into the world, or whatever, whoever our parents are, whoever uh, maybe we're born uh, as orphans, or parents of the mother who died at birth, and things like that, uh, it, it, we still have free will. We suffer, and I think suffering helps us to get closer to God. Uh, we suffer, and He does everything He can to bring us in, no matter where the seed So that's our lesson for today. Uh, a good one, uh, again, for self-examination on uh, who am I and, and what am I? What do I do with my life, and who should I be? And may our Lord save you for